All right, so I'm going to switch over here to the phone and I'm using a Motorola Droid 2. And before we can deploy to the device, notice I don't have it plugged in. We need to be able we need to set some things so that we can deploy and debug on the device. So the first thing we want to do, let's go over here and we'll click the menu button and then we want to choose the settings button. At this point, uh, we want to scroll down and we want to choose applications. And from here, notice we have this option here. It says unknown sources. You want to make sure that's checked in order to install apps that are not from the Google or the Android market. You have to allow for unknown sources. So uh, all the apps we're going to build are unknown sources. And so even though we self sign them, they're not from the uh, Android market. So make sure that's checked. The next thing we want to do is click on Oops, that's not what I wanted. Backup. I'm kind of doing this sideways, so I'm going to end upside down. Plus, I'm hanging from the ceiling, so this makes it a little difficult. Okay, go ahead and click development. And uh, wait, let's fix that. Fix. There we focus. Focus. There we go. So uh, notice we have USB de USB debugging. We want that checked. Uh, and then might as well set stay awake. You know, it's always good to stay awake, unless of course you're an air traffic controller, <laughs> then I guess it doesn't matter if you stay awake. All right, so those are the settings we need. And I'll just kind of press the home button and go back. Now, I'm going to plug in, and I'll reach over here, and I'll turn this, and I'll plug this in right. Okay, now I'm plugged in, and notice it kind of said something there. And if you look up here, at the top, uh, and if I if I swipe from the top, notice that we have a couple of uh, listings here. It says USB connected connection, and then USB debugging connected. Make sure it says USB debugging connected or some similar wording. If you plug it in and it doesn't say that, then that means that your computer has not recognized the device. Now, if you're on a Mac. Uh, it'll recognize it and everything will work great and no problems because of Steve Jobs. You know how it is. But if you're on a Windows machine and you've never connected the device, then uh, you may run into an issue where you need to install the device drivers. Now, the device drivers are usually included with the phone. And so uh, we'll cover that in another tutorial. But basically, if you're on a Windows mas machine, uh, be aware of that when you plug it in. You may have some problems. but uh, I can't help you. Oh wait, well I will help you. I'll just make fun of you. I mean, I'll help you. So uh, the other thing here, we can click uh, this USB connection and we have some options. Now, um, we don't want PC mode. We don't want Windows Media Sync. We do want charge only. That tends to work really well. Sometimes USB mass storage will work but on a Windows machine, you may run into problems if it's connected. It may see it as like a storage device, but not recognize it as a phone until you've installed the device driver. So keep that in mind. Uh, so we'll just make sure it says charge only. Okay, so now let's go back over here to the code and let's talk about the deployment. Okay, let's go ahead and click the little uh, Edit Application Settings button. And again, we've covered a lot of this. Um, one thing to note, if your app name has like a underscore or any weird characters, then the app ID may be incorrect. If you, if you go to deploy it, it may throw an error and it may even say, you know, the app ID. And so just pay attention to that. You can only really have, just keep it to uh, letters for the app ID. That way, and no spaces, no underscores. Uh, you can have like this little com dot, your domain dot, app name, that type of thing. But if, if you have any <clears throat> weird characters, it will throw an error. All right, let's click over to deployment. And at this point, let's create a uh, self-signing certificate. So we'll go ahead and click create. And here we're just going to enter the information, uh, Brent 
Arnold, you can, you know, if you're a legitimate business, I mean, I'm not an illegitimate, illegitimate business, but I'm just saying. Uh, <clears throat> really, it's just kind of information more for internal tracking for most of this. Go ahead and set a password. This password is so that when you sign it, you have to enter a password. Uh, again, it says valid for 25 years. That's what they want. <clears throat> Excuse me. Go ahead and click this uh, folder. We want to save this. And uh, we'll go ahead and save this. You can save it to the desktop. And we'll just call this Brent Rocks. No spaces in it. Uh, go ahead and save. Now, this will save it as a .p12 file, which is uh, the self-signed certificate. Now, this is different than your Apple signing certificate. It's similar, but I wouldn't use, you, you wouldn't use your Apple certificate to sign these because the validity period is only one year. So make sure you have it set for 25 years and you're just doing a self-signed certificate. Go ahead and click OK. And then in a brief second, it'll tell us, hey, congratulations. Click OK. And then it even adds it here of reference. Now, go ahead and enter your password, Fluffy Bunny. And then, uh, this is a good one. Remember password for this session. What that means is when you deploy, uh, every time you deploy, or if you close this dialog, you'll have to, and you and you haven't saved the password, you'll have to enter it every time when you go to publish. If you say remember password, then as long as Flash is open and you're creating apps, then it'll save that information. All right, we want device release and the air runtime. It at this point, it doesn't really matter because uh, we're not deploying to anything. But I do want to make sure it's install to connect a device and launch application. Now, again, we don't see these buttons, but this one says publish. So I'll go ahead and click publish. And then it'll build it and it'll say it's publishing. And I'll look over here at my device. And we're waiting and it says publishing. And I'm looking at the device. Okay, here it comes. <gasps> hey, look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, we have our first Android app running on the device. Now, you're saying to yourself, wow, Brent, this sucks, man. <laughs> this ain't nothing. And I'll say, well, sure, because... Now, notice what's happening. The text is small, the buttons are small, all this little stuff. But, you know, you can interact with it. But this is what I'm talking about. You know, the, the components are not built for mobile. You can certainly create your own, and there are others out there. But just keep that in mind. So as you can see, when you test it on the device, you have to take into account the actual screen size and the user experience. So, you know, this square is more of a button size, maybe, you know, maybe half of that. But anyway, the point is that you now have an app that you've written in Flash and deployed to your device and everything's working perfectly and it's going to be awesome. I'm going to go back here to the code and I'm going to click OK and I'm going to save this. And in the other tutorials, we're going to introduce the uh, mobile APIs. We're going to start, we're going to do cool stuff with the camera, cool stuff with geolocation, uh, just cool stuff, man. That's what it's all about. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.